And here are all the items included in the new Marks Latch Retraction Kit. Your motor mount with MM4S module and your push and go connector pigtail with set screw, a eight foot power lead and your two screws. So we'll start off by sliding off the push pad and base rail from the housing. We'll set the housing aside. Next, we're gonna grab our 832 tap and we're just gonna tap that center hole and just clean off any debris. Then we're gonna grab our 832 set screw and we're gonna put the opening down You'll understand why later and just hand tighten it in that hole until it's flush with the base rail. Then we're going to remove the two pins securing the push pad to the base rail. And those will just pull right out. And when you lift the push pad up, you'll see that there are these metal spacers on there that might fall off. You're going to want to hold on to those um, so we can set those aside and make sure that we attach them when we reassemble the push pad. Next, I'm going to flip over the push pad, and on the underneath of the front side, there's two Phillip head screws. I'm just going to remove both of those screws so I can slide that push pad end cap off. Once I slide that off, I can flip the push pad back over, and it has that filler plate that I'm just going to slide forward just enough until I reveal the back four sets of screw holes. And the two to the left, I'm going to remove gain access to that back activating bracket which is secured with the pin. I'll pull that pin out and what do you know we got some more metal washers so I'm going to remove those metal washers because that's where our hooks are going to attach onto. Put the back activating bracket back together by reinserting that pin. Now I'm going to grab that back activating bracket and line it up with the existing holes and reinstall the two screws to secure the back activating bracket back to the push pad. Slide that filler plate back on and slide the push pad end cap back on. Reinstall both screws. Now I'm ready to install our kit. First, we're gonna grab the back activating bracket and bend it towards the front of the push pad and grab our motor mount next. And with those attaching hooks, we can see they're gonna grab right on to the pin in the space in between the back activating bracket. And I'm gonna pull it to make sure it locks in there. And now we can flip the kit over so that it's sitting on the back of the push pad and flip the push pad back over. Once it's back on the base rail, we'll line up those two activating brackets with the existing mounting holes. But wait! We can't forget our metal washers, so we'll grab those and add them on the outside of the activating brackets before lining them up with the base rail and reinserting the pin to attach the push pad to the base rail. Now let's confirm that the window on the bottom of the motor bracket has dropped over the set screw so that the motor is sitting flush on the base rail. And then we can flip over the push pad and base rail to secure the motor with the two screws provided. And secure the motor mount with the two screws supplied. The holes that are diagonal from each other and flush, those are our two holes we're going to utilize and install the two screws provided. Now with the motor mount secured to the base rail, we can flip the device back over. I'll just push down on the push pad a few times to confirm that everything's connected and the motor is attached properly. Next, I'll slide the housing back on. Slide the base rail and motor into the existing channel in the housing. Watch out for those black push pad guides. And the pins, if not properly centered, when sliding back in, can get caught on one of the channels, preventing the push pad and base rail sliding in. So make sure if you are getting stuck that you just recenter those pins and slide that housing all the way in. Next, flip over the device and we'll see that small hole in the back. We're gonna push the push pad until we see that set screw line up with the hole 
and we're going to grab our two millimeter hex tool and rotate it counterclockwise until the screw is flush with the housing and locks in that base rail. Next I'll grab our push and go connector pigtail and field tester. Grab the push and go connector side and plug into the back of the MM4S. This is non-polarity sensitive so don't worry about red or black. Now I'm going to plug into our field tester and if you are in the field and you do not want this connection point you can always cut both of these off and hardwire but for the simplicity of plug and play I like to keep them for the videos to start off I'm gonna fire off the device a few times and seeing if the latch is retracting to where I'd like it to if I want to make any adjustment I'll just hold down the push pad to where I want the device to retract to apply power for about six to seven seconds enough for those six beeps to go through their cycle as soon as those six beeps have stopped it has now learned its new location. I can refire to make sure that it's to my liking, and I'm good to go. And I'll end another smooth installation with a celebratory dance party. Thank you for calling Command Access. We're here to help. And don't forget to visit commandaccess.com where you'll have all the information on our products at your fingertips. If you want a web chat, ask a quick question, or you need a cut sheet, possibly the installation instructions, or an easy link to the YouTube installation video, we've got it all here for you.